welcome to Mountain Sledder Garage. This segment we're going to be working on this Ski-Doo 850 Turbo. Um, showing you how to pull the chain case off, how to adjust the chain, what to look for while you're in there. Um, we've already pulled the hood off. We have another video for that. You can look for that. It's a little bit different on the turbo sled than it is the regular normally aspirated 850s. Also, we've pulled the muffler off. It's also a little different than the other normally aspirated 850. So we've made a video on that. So look for that. Pretty simple if you know what to look for and what to do it. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unhook some of the electronics. Up here there's this bike guy here. Here they've got this little lock, red locking mechanism. You want to push that over to the side and you push your thumb down on that and you can just pull that and that comes apart. Makes it very pretty simple. Do that. You want to make sure when you put that back together you push the locking mechanism back on. Next thing we're going to do, we already drained the oil on this and in the bottom of the chain case there is a little Allen headed drain plug. Same drain plug as you'll find right here. So if you find an Allen wrench that fits that, this is a 3 16 on the bottom here. There's a hole in the bottom of the chain case. Put that in there, unscrew that, let the oil drain out. Um, we've done that, that's good to go. The other thing we need to do, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here that hooks onto the chain case to the frame right here. We're gonna pull that off. Um, there's one other 10 millimeter bolt. It's a little bit different because ski has put on the whole chain case to hold it on, it has these torque screws all over. There's eight of this size, there's two here, one here, one here. Those are T40s, these are T30s. But down here, you can see down in here, they have this one lone 10 millimeter bolt, which is a little odd. And there's a hole down here you can access that through right there. You put your socket wrench in there. Uh, and you can unscrew that 10 millimeter head right there. It's a little bit different than the other bolts that we're going to be working with. So next ones we're going to do is our T30s. There's eight of these. These silver ones around the perimeter. So there's eight of those. I've already pulled most of them off so it doesn't take, this video doesn't take as long. Now I've also, before I did this, I've gone around with a ratchet and I've made sure all of those can come loose easily because I've seen enough people over the years since the 850 Turbo's been out. Some of these can stick in pretty good and I've seen people strip out the Torx heads because it gets stuck in there and then once that's rounded out, you have a real bugger of a time getting this thing out of there. So make sure you go around and not just hit everything with an impact wrench first. Um, impact wrench makes it a lot quicker, um, but you can strip those out if they're stuck in there pretty good. So I loosen them first with a, with a ratchet. <laughs> One down here. Can't get on it. Now, when we do this, you want to check your chain probably at least once a year just to see what its condition is. Now, these are T40s, the other ones are T30s. There's one here and one here. Make sure this one goes on where you have it. This one has a little copper washer on it that keeps oil from leaking out here because it goes right through the chain case where the oil is. We're going to do that one and then we'll pull this guy all the way up. We'll put him there. We'll pull our extender off to get down in here. Now I've also pulled this T bolt off here just so that you can pull this back a little bit and get a little more room. Now this is really the one I've seen stripped before, is this one right here on there, because it's pretty tight the first time, and it's, a, it's stuck in there a little bit better. Now, two more electronics we have to pull off here. There's this one. This went to your temperature sensor gauge and your muffler right here. You put a screwdriver back there, you pull that clip, push that, pull, pry that clip back a little bit, and you can slide that off. You can see where it locks on right there into that little hole right there. Um, this one's a little bit harder to get off. You kind of have to get the chain case cover loose before because there's a clip on the back side. It's hard to get your finger to it. But if you loosen all your bolts, you can get your finger on that. As you can see, there's a little button you push on it, but it's on the back side. It's a little bit harder to get to until you can get your chain case cover loose because there's not a lot of room back there. Now we've got everything loose. Um, the last thing you want to do is pull out this plug for your upper bolt, for your upper um, gear up there on your chain. And then this, this isn't hooked to your chain cover, it's hooked to the back side, but it's got a little rubber grommet. You can see that flexes a little bit. You want to 
push that up a little, pull your chain case out, and then you can kind of work this thing out of here just like that. Now we've got our chain exposed here. This sled only has about 200, 250 miles on it. I don't know if, the, if we've ever adjusted the chain on this because it was a new machine. Um, so, but you can see not a lot of play in that, which is really nice. The other thing, when you put this back together, you have to remember there's a little rubber gasket that goes all the way around in this groove right here. You can reuse that and reuse that, so you don't need to replace that when you pull the chain case cover out. As long as that's in good shape, and you haven't some, somehow damaged that rubber to where it's going to leak. Um, now, we want to really inspect this chain really well for any kind of damage or broken links. I'm going to show you why. I got a picture over here of one chain that was we found once that was broken. You can see here it's got a broken link there, broken link there, broken link there, and another broken link right here. You know, that's got almost half the links broken across that 15 wide chain. And that probably might have let loose sometime in a ride or two later. And the farther back you're in, when that thing lets loose and grenades inside your chain case, that chain, if it's spinning, it's got a lot of weight on it. It's going to tear your chain case apart, leave you with a lot of damage, and getting that sled out of the middle of the back country with that broken like that is not really a fun thing. Um, so you want to really want to check this probably once a year if you have a chain on your sled. You can replace the chain if you're worried about the chain breaking with the belt drive from TKI, C3, or MVM. They all three make belt drives for the G4 Ski-Doo chassis. Um, so we also, if you want to check your chain during the season, but you want to take the cover off, we can come over here and we just kind of see how much play. This is about the right amount of play for this, just barely any at all. Um, if you get a whole bunch of play, you know your chain's stretched and it's too loose or, the, or it's worn enough that you need to check it again. So to adjust the chain, there's this clip that goes back in here. I've already taken it off, but you pull this round thing out, pull this round clip out, and then expose, you got that Torx screw right there. Then you want to get this tool that comes out from your, your um, clutch cover on the other side. And this goes in right there. Now if you come over here to this side, that that we've hooked this tool to goes all the way through to this and it screws through this and that will loosen this or tighten this. If we go counterclockwise, you can see it loosens the chain and I get a lot more play in the chain. If I go clockwise on that, tightens the chain up. So those are things we want to look for. Now, as you're looking at this, since we can't really see this bottom part of the chain, you're going to want to rotate your track enough to where you can really see, get down in here and look at the chain really good through its full circumference. Um, if you really want to look at it really good, you loosen this up quite a bit, pull this bolt off, you can pull that um, gear off, and you can pull the whole chain off and let's inspect it really well. So chain case, chain case maintenance and inspection, really important to do. Um, at the beginning of the season. Don't want to leave you stranded anywhere. Okay, so we've put everything back together. Muffler's in, all the springs are on. We put the chain case cover back on. A couple things we want to remember when we put this back on is this screw right here, this Torx head, this black one hits the copper washer. That keeps that one from leaking. That's the only one that goes through the chain case that could leak oil. The other thing we want to make sure we do is we've had this apart and adjusted it that this um, pin is in that locks the chain case adjust or the chain adjustment into place. Make sure those two things are correct. The other thing is um, we're going to go to the manual for this machine. There is a torque sequence for the bolts in the chain case and also a torque reading. So we want to make sure we adjust it in the sequence. Tighten them down like finger tight first and go back and tighten them to torque. Um, this bolt and this bolt have two separate torques than the rest of them. And then the outside ones all have the same torque. And you can see here they have one if you're using the same chase ca chain case over again, or if you have a brand new chain case, because maybe you've hit a rock and you've blown it out and you had to replace the whole unit. Um, and the reason for that is, the reason why the new chain case have a little bit higher torque readings is if we come over here to our chain case, I will show you why that is. So I, I tightened everything down, then I took this one last bolt out, and I don't know if you can see this. If you look at this bolt, you can see that. 
This bolt's not round. It's triangular. You can see the little triangle on the end. This is a self-tapping screw. If you were to replace this chain case, you would notice all these holes don't have threads in them. That's because when you screw these screws in the first time, they kind of cut their own threads. And that keeps gives them, that gets them real kind of real tight in there, so you don't have to worry about them coming out. Um, so the first time it's going to be tighter, so you're going to have to use more torque when you put them in when the when they're cutting the threads. Or if you have a used chain case like this that's already got the threads cut, you're going to use the lower torque. Now, if you're going to use something like this to screw these in, you want to make sure you have something with a clutch on it. I always put it at the lowest setting because I've, I've seen people strip out the heads on the Torx bolts and I've also people, seen people strip out the threads. You really don't want to do that. You're probably better off screwing it in by hand with a ratchet. But I will use this. I have it on the lowest torque setting and I'll put these in. And you see I didn't get in very far before the clutch hit. And then I'll go back through and I have this set to the proper torque which is about 90 inch pounds and we'll finish screwing this guy in. There we go, we're kind of hitting the end here. There we go. Hit, that's torqued right. I've already torqued all the rest of them. That was the last one. I just kind of want to show you those few things. And then the last thing is putting oil in. We want to make sure that we don't forget the oil. Um, I have this nice little thing. I didn't put the plug in here yet. The cover's up the top sprocket because that's where you fill the oil out. So I'm going to put that down in there to put oil in. Now, you can fill the oil with two, one of two ways, or both if you want. This chain case holds 350 milliliters, which is also about 12 ounces of oil. Um, they say this is where the oil fill line is, so you can take this out, that little screw, and you can fill it until oil just barely starts to drain out of here, or if you want to measure out like I've done here, the right amount of oil, 12 ounces of oil. Um, it also says in your owner's manual that you're supposed to use XPS chain case oil, and if it's not available, use another suitable 75, 140 weight gear oil. Um, but then it goes on to say, if you don't use the Skido oil and you have some kind of failure in here, your warranty may not cover it. So just be aware of that. The Skido oil costs about twice as much as other off not Skido um, chain case oil. So we're going to fill this guy up. And since this is such a thick oil, it's going to take a little while for it to drain down through that little tube I've got in there. So when you're done with this, a little drip of oil is going to come out of here. We won't wait for that. It's going to take a couple of minutes. Um, so you want to make sure you don't understand how to do this maintenance. Keep your snowmobile running. Try and avoid failures during the winter. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Look for others that we have. Um, just remember, I'm not here to sell you any products. Uh, I buy my own products, buy my own snowmobiles on my own. I don't, I'm not sponsored by any companies. Um, so I want you to feel free. This is all unbiased information. I hope you have a good winter and you've enjoyed Mountain Slider Garage and check back with us for other videos.